Things went big sideways over the weekend at Atomic Speedway, and we got details. Plus, Kyle Larson really isn't racing the Chili Bowl. Let's go. It's Tuesday, November 8th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Before we get into the show today, I wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you. We went over 10,000 YouTube subscribers last night, which is absolutely incredible. Early in 2022, I thought there was a chance we could get here before the year was out, but the growth of the channel the last two months has been really big, and we got here with still nearly two months left in the year. We should also cross over 2 million total video views by the end of this year as well. Just to give you an idea of the growth of the channel, in 2021, we did 433,000 total views and with still something like seven or eight weeks left in 2022, we're already well over 1.3 million this year. I don't know how big this thing can get, but I'm willing to keep pushing and busting my ass every day to bring you guys fresh episodes and cool dirt racing content. Remember that this show can be watched on YouTube or you can listen in podcast form at all your favorite podcast places, Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever you get pods. Uh, and I've also got dirttracker.com. Make sure you check that out. You can also follow Dirt Tracker across social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And as an added bonus, I've knocked 30% off all merchandise uh, for the next day or two over at shop.dirttracker.com. If you use the code 10,000 at checkout, shipping was already free. I'll cover sales tax, but you'll get an additional 30% off. Uh, already, let's get into today's episode. Uh, if you tuned in yesterday, I alluded at the end of the show to the problems over the weekend at Atomic Speedway in Ohio. And I want wanted to dive into that story today. The Renegades of Dirt series took over the racetrack for what was supposed to be a four-day show. This was a track rental, so the track got a fee to use the facility, and then the event organizers were in complete control of everything. And this is not an uncommon deal type across the sport. It's one that gets used by some high-profile series and events. The four days of racing were supposed to feature late models, modifieds, and sport mods, and the purses were pretty hefty. According to the event promotion, Friday and Sunday's modified races were $15,000 to win, and Saturday's late model race was $14,000 to win. Unfortunately, though, all four days of racing were not completed, and that amount of money did not end up getting paid out. The Thursday and Friday races did happen, but things did not run smoothly, and some racers at this point still haven't been paid. And by Saturday, the entire weekend started to completely fall apart. During the driver's meeting, it was announced that the late model purse was being cut and the winner's share was going from $14,000 down to $4,000. So just a $10,000 haircut for the winner. They also announced the complete cancellation of the entire day Sunday, which included a 15,000 win modified race. And some teams were so upset, they decided to basically load up and leave. Uh, but there were others, uh, plenty of others that stuck it out. Eventually, though, the Speedway management was basically forced to take over the rest of the Saturday show, and they paid out the purse themselves to all divisions when it became clear that money was going to yet again be a problem for the organizers. I talked with both track owner Charlie Vest and Atomics race director Dave Andrews about this uh, situation, and unfortunately, it seems as though Robbie Cyrus and the Renegades of Dirt made some serious mistakes, and things just really got away from them. Sounds like the hope was that the promise of a big purse would draw both competitors to the back gate and fans to the front gate. But it became apparent pretty quickly during the weekend that that just didn't happen. The promoters needed the gate proceeds to cover the purse, and when the numbers didn't add up, things went sideways quick. And Charlie eventually stepped in to guarantee the racers a payout on Saturday, uh, but there are a lot of angry and upset people over the entire weekend. Just scrolling some of the Facebook comments is like, whoa. Uh, and this was the perfect example of when race promoting goes bad, and some big missteps occurred along the way. There was not nearly enough actual marketing pro uh, promotion that happened to try and draw fans and competitors. A bunch of organic Facebook posts don't count as a marketing plan. Also, I'm not sure how you go into an event advertising a purse you can't afford to pay unless certain conditions are met. It just seems like that's a massive risk to take for a November show in Ohio. It's a shame because Cyrus and his series have now probably been damaged beyond repair in the community, and Charlie and the track were left trying to pick up the pieces and took a beating themselves in the process. Charlie did tell me that he'll make changes to these types of agreements in the future so as to avoid blowups like this. And even with all this madness over the previous few days, the future is bright for Atomic with Charlie in charge. If you want to hear more from him, go find my past conversations episode where he was a guest. I personally like his approach. He's got some good ideas for the facility. You know, and Atomic is kind of one of those staple Ohio tracks. And for example, he's currently got a deal worked out for one of the Atomic Trek champions to get an ARCA test at Daytona in the future. That's pretty cool. You hear me say all the time how difficult it is to promote races and run tracks and series. And it's often tough to have success even when things go completely right. 
Mistakes of this magnitude from the Renegades of Dirt, though, will never go unpunished. Jumping over to some news from yesterday, the Wild West Shootout, which is the late model event at Vado Speedway Park coming up in January, has kind of slowly been releasing some names of drivers we'll see uh, coming up there early next year. They started this kind of early in October and have just been kind of slowly releasing these names. Expected, uh, expected entrants right now include guys like Bobby Pierce, Brandon Shepard, Mike Marler, Tyler Erb, Earl Pearson Jr. There's a whole bunch more as well. The name that got released yesterday was Kyle Larson, and that is notable because the dates of the Wild West shootout directly conflict with the Chili Bowl. If you might remember back to July, Larson came out publicly and said he would not compete at the Chili Bowl until the purses were raised, and he seems to be set on following through on that. At the time, he told Racing America's Matt Weaver, quote, I'm just at the point where I want to see the purse grow a lot. So for the time being, and unless that happens, I won't be running it this year. And I know there are a lot of racers that feel the same way, unquote. That then led to Chili Bowl owner Emmett Hahn telling Weaver that he, quote, will not be backed into a corner. In the months since, nothing has come about, uh, come out about any changes to the Chili Bowl purse. Not that we expected it to change, especially after Hahn's comments. So Larson has made other plans. The six nights of the Wild West shootout do offer the opportunity to make a lot more money for someone like Larson, with five of the nights paying 10000 to win and 600 to start, and the finale being 25000 to win and 1000 to start. And there are also bonuses available for multiple wins, plus a small points payout for the week. So with Larson now out, the question will be if he draws anyone else away with him. There have been some other names kind of rumored to be in the mix as well. And I think the timing of the Larson news is interesting here with Chili Bowl entries set to open tomorrow. <laughs> we got the first look at early entries uh, for last year's Chili Bowl on November 30th. So we should start getting a picture of who's in and who's out kind of in the next few weeks here. Uh, so uh, we'll I just have to kind of pay attention to the news here from the Chili Bowl. Uh, if you want to watch some dirt racing tonight, the Short Track Super Series begins their Cajun Swing with a stop at Rocket Race, uh, Raceway Park in Texas. These races are not part of the larger series championships, but some nice cash is available through the week. Uh, according to a release from the series, the car counts should be pretty strong. Expect names like Andy Bacchetti, Matt Shepard, Eric Rudolph, Ryan Godown, and more. Sounds like quite a few guys that were at Charlotte this last week for World Finals that have now continued south to Texas and Louisiana. Tonight's race is 4,000 a win with limited modifieds and factory stocks also on the card. Adult tickets are 20 bucks if you're headed that way, uh, or you can watch it live over on Flow Racing. Speaking of the streaming schedule, two shows on it for today, both of them happening over on Flow. The aforementioned Short Track Super Series begins, uh, and there is Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, head over to dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Tuesday. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the show if you do not do so already. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.